couch Dogs need adolescents Hey there, Lickin' Riffers, how are you doing? Welcome to another awesome installment of the never-ending fingerstyle rhythm pattern exercises video series designed to make you a better fingerstylist and overall musician. Now, every week we alternate between beginner, intermediate, and advanced lessons, and this week it's time for another advanced lesson. So we're gonna walk through four awesome exercises and riffs, the last of which will be a Tommy Emanuel riff, but the first one is also a lot of fun, it goes like this. <laughs> kind of a rock riff for finger style. So uh, you start by playing the A string twice, and then you play five and seven on strings three and four. Okay, it's a third outlining an A minor chord. We're gonna solo with thirds here. So uh, you start by A, A, and then five and seven. Okay, five on the third string, seven on the fourth. Then you do the exact same thing, but with four and five on the same set of strings. Okay, so A, A, and then four and five on strings three and four. So you get A, A, five and seven, A, A, four and five. Then you play A once and five and seven again. Okay, and that concludes the rhythm pattern. A, A, third, A, A, third, A, third. And for this riff's purposes, because you can improvise with it, I'll show you how to do it after we'll learn the riff. Um, so it's five and seven, then four and five, then five and seven again. Okay, and then the second bar is the same rhythm pattern with seven and nine and nine and ten. So you play A, A, seven and nine, A, A, nine and ten, A, seven and nine. And then you play the first lick again. So you get this. Pretty cool, right? So the ending lick is this. Okay, it's A, A twice, and then four and five twice. Then it's A, A twice more, and then two and two twice. Now, two and two isn't a third, it's a fourth. But this is A5, and we're in the key of A minor, so this is the root, and it marks the ending. So A, A, four and five twice, A, A, two and two twice. That's the ending lick. I also wrote down a variation right here in the tab, at the end of the tab line, and it's this. Okay, it's the same rhythm pattern as this. It's A, A, and then four and five, A, A, and then zero and zero, and then A once, and then two and two. So it's now zero and zero isn't a third as well, it's a fourth. So if you want to play thirds, you can play two and three and zero and two. And this gives you the scale zero and two, two and three, four and five, seven and uh, five and seven, seven and nine, nine and ten, ten and twelve. Okay, and if you want to go on, it's twelve and thirteen, fourteen and fifteen, and so on. Uh, repeating the same pattern. So, um, this gives you a lot of space for improv. You can mix and match the rhythm patterns. You can play A, A, and then a third twice, and then A, A, and a third twice. Okay, this works. You can also play A once, and a chord once. Okay, and you can also play A three times, and then a chord and then A once and then a chord, and that kind of balances it out. So, um, the second exercise goes like this. Okay, this is uh, kind of a fretting hand exercise, and this chord, is E7-9 or E dominant 9. It's this, but in a different position. So this exercise 
is based on playing the bass solo with your middle finger. So you put your first finger on the first fret of the third string, you put your pinky on the third fret of the second string, and you put your third finger on two on the first string. So you get this. Now, the solo is pretty simple, but uh, it takes a bit of practice to get comfortable with it, just like with everything else. You hammer on 0 to 2 on the 4th string, and then you play the chord. Then you pull it off. Then you play the chord. Then you do the same thing on the A string. Hammer on to 2, chord, pull off to 0, chord. Then, on the bass, you play 2 and you bend it, and then you play the open E bass, and that's it. Okay, this is kind of a neat chord to play, and when you play it up to speed, um, a lot of people will go, what are you doing there with that weird chord, and why is your middle finger playing the solo? Okay, admit it, it's, it, it looks very, very weird. like a spidery creature there so I'll take the hand off of the guitar and teach you the next exercise the next exercise is also an exercise uh, the first one is a riff the last one is a Tommy Emanuel riff and the second and third are um, exercises so we exercise this hand now let's exercise this hand it's kind of a blues rhythm pattern and if you're used to playing straight through we're gonna play swing eights like this Okay, now the exercise would be adding chords to this. Okay, this is a pretty simple exercise, but it, it, it's advanced because of the swing eighth rhythm that you have to keep up with your thumb. And if you palm mute it, then you have to keep these notes open, so... As with everything else, this is just the basis. You can really complicate it later, but you need to know the basis, and this is a rhythm pattern lesson, so this is the basis. You play the open E bass, um, you know, like so, I don't need to explain it. Bum, ba, bum, ba, bum, ba, bum, ba, bum, ba, bum, ba, bum. Now you think about it as one and two and three and four and one. And you add the chord, I play 4 and 5 on strings 1 and 2, and I slide into them uh, from 3 and 4. You can slide from 2 and 3, okay, but I like the jazzy sound of uh, sliding from one approach note instead of... You can also slide from 1 and 2 if you want. Sounds cool too. So it's bass, and 2, and 3, and... And then on the four, you play the chord. So it's one and two and three and four. The chord is on the four. And then the next chord is on the next end. So you play the chord with the bass note and then right away you play the first bass note, the first beat of the next bar. So it's, got it? It's chord with bass, chord with bass, and then the bass starting the next bar. So. This is the part where it gets confusing for some because you tend to focus on the chord you're playing, on the high notes. And here you have to focus on the bass. The chord is the accompaniment. The bass is the lead. So... Can you tell the bass is the strong part here? That's the lead part. So the chord is the accompaniment. So that's how you need to treat it. And you can also play a chord with the first note, the very, very first note. The rest of it will be like I just showed you. So you can do this. Um, you can keep the chord ring. Okay, so one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one. See, it's on the four end. So um, that's the best explanation I can give. It's a simple rhythm pattern, but sometimes uh, something simple 
is the hardest one to play. So now we've arrived at the fourth exercise for this lesson, which is the main riff of Tommy Emanuel's Lewis and Clark. It sounds like this. <laughs> This is the riff I'm talking about. Okay, this is what we're gonna concentrate on, this riff, with the Travis picking aspect of it, which makes it a pretty complex finger style riff. So uh, if you're having trouble with Travis picking, go to my 20 beginner Travis picking exercise video and then come back and learn this or learn this in this simplified pattern uh, as I'm gonna show you first before we go into the Travis picking and then come back and try the Travis picking. Now uh, if you want an entry point play E minor and G uh, which is pretty much the intro. Okay and you can also add this. Okay it's uh, zero hammer on to three pull off to two pull off to zero on the second string then two uh, on the third string and then the open second string again and then E minor and G again so it's okay so if you want to play the intro that's the intro but I only uh, put on the E minor and G there in the tab uh, as an indication if you want an entry point instead of just uh, starting with this which you can do but you know, it's just E minor and G, so you can play it. Now, um, the intro, the, the rhythm pattern, the basic rhythm pattern is this. It's bass, chord, okay, with the alternating bass note. It's bass, chord, and then bass, note, bass, note. Or bass, chord, bass, chord. Or, okay, whichever one you prefer. So this is the pattern that you're looking to keep when you play the licks. So bass, chord, bass note, bass note, bass, chord, bass note, bass note, bass, chord, bass note, bass note, okay, and so on and so forth. So the first lick is this, three on the second string, open E string, and then you play a D chord, you pick strum it, okay, and you hammer on zero to two on the E string. Now you can play D over F sharp, which is uh, thumb on two on the sixth string. But for this exercise, we're gonna play a normal D chord, okay? You can play D over F sharp, but we're gonna concentrate on the licks instead of on uh, which bass notes to pick. So it's... And then you have another bass note, and then right away you play which is three pull off to two pull off to zero on the, the first string, okay? The intro had it on the second string, this time it's on the E string inside a D chord. And then three on the second string and then the open E string again and right away you play A, so it's. Okay, and then you have the pattern which begins with bass chord, remember? So it's. to keep the E string open when you change the chord but that's the least of your problems because when you play it with Travis picking you have to play the pull off to zero along with a bass note so hey okay, got it with a bass note that's where it gets complicated because the lick begins on an off beat then right away you play two pull off to zero, you're on A now, you play two pull off to zero on the second string and then two on the third, open second string. And then it's E and then G. So it's, again, the pull off to zero is with a bass note, so. the 
full picking pattern on the E chord and then on G you play bass chord and start again. So the, um, the two challenges here uh, are to keep the bass notes going and be precise on uh, aligning the pull offs with the bass notes and keeping the open strings ringing when you change the chord. So very slowly try to listen to the bass notes this time. just did play it very very slowly until you can feel comfortable to build it up to speed so I wish you a lot of fun with this and before you go practice this subscribe to my channel if you haven't already there's a ton of lessons here for you to learn for free and the tab is also for free you can go download it from the website the link is right below in the description and when you're there if you want to give something back to Lickin' Riff and help out with making these lessons there's a large blue donation button right above the tabs you can't miss it and I'll appreciate any help whatsoever everything goes right back into Lickin' Riff into making time to make these lessons it all takes a lot of time and work um, so I'd appreciate if you want to chip in and help out with your own guitar education thank you very much for watching I'll see you in the next lesson bye for now enjoy <laughs>